When Apple came out with the M4 Pro Mac Mini, I was really impressed with just how much power they were able to get into this tiny machine. But the computer I was really excited about was the M4 Max Max Studio. And now I've spent a lot of time with both of these computers using them in the real world. In this video, we're gonna go over all the differences between them both in the hardware, the specs they have, the ports they have, and also we're gonna talk about real world tests that I've performed with both of these to help you decide if you should get the M4 Pro Mac Mini or if you should go all the way up to the M4 Max Max Studio. First and biggest difference is honestly the size. The M4 Pro Mac Mini you could easily fit into a backpack or in a suitcase as well. This thing is so compact and lightweight. The M4 Max Max Studio by comparison feels pretty big, although it's a lot smaller than any other desktop tower. In the front of it though, you get two 10 gigabit a second USB-C ports and you also get a UHS-2 SD card slot, which is very handy to have if you're using cameras a lot. And on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, there's two USB-C ports as well as the headphone jack, which is kind of handy to have that on the front, although it is more annoying if you want to have it on the back for docking purposes. Then the real area where you notice the differences on these is the back of them. So the M4 Max Max Studio has way more ports on it. You have four Thunderbolt ports, you have an HDMI port, 10 gigabit a second ethernet port, as well as a couple USB-A ports as well. So you get everything you need on the M4 Max Max Studio. You can really get by using this without having any dock. On the M4 Pro Mac Mini, there's an HDMI port, a network port that you can upgrade to 10 gigabit a second, but it does come at a $100 extra charge. And there's three Thunderbolt 5 ports on it, which is nice that you have the Thunderbolt 5 ports if you get the M4 Pro versus if you just stick with the standard M4 Mac Mini. The Mac Mini has a single fan with more of a heatsink style design, and the Mac Studio actually has dual fans and does a better job at intake and outtake on the thermal cooling on it. So this one, again, is just gonna be better if you're using it for a longer period of time under the heavier workloads. You can get the M4 Max chip in either the bend lower end version or the higher end non-bend version. That's the one I got. Memory bandwidth is another differentiator between the two of these. The Mac Studio's memory bandwidth is 573 gigabytes a second, and the Mac Mini comes in at just 273 gigabytes a second, which just means it's gonna use the RAM more effectively because the CPU is gonna be able to talk to the RAM faster. Also, it is worth noting that the M4 Max has more GPU and CPU cores than the M4 Pro chip does, which again is gonna translate better whenever you're using this under more extreme conditions. For day-to-day -day of use, both of these machines felt really snappy and responsive. I didn't notice one of them necessarily feeling better or worse than the other, especially for things like web browsing, productivity. Even editing video on Final Cut Pro, both of them did pretty well, but I will give the edge to the Mac Studio because it seemed like as soon as I clicked play or if I was skimming, it just loaded a little bit faster. Although if I was just using them blind, I probably wouldn't have noticed any difference. And if I was using the Mac Mini by itself, I also would have been totally content with the performance out of this computer. And if if you're a video professional, this is where I think the M4 Max absolutely destroys the M4 Pro is because it has double the video encoders and the video decoders, which means for a lot of software like Final Cut Pro, your video export speeds are actually going to be double the speed using the Mac Studio over even using the M4 Pro Mac Mini. The M4 Pro Mac Mini is really only a little bit faster than the M4 Mac Mini at exporting videos. So if you want to have those fastest possible speeds, you need to get the M4 Max or even the M3 Ultra chip on a Mac Studio. Let's talk some benchmarks and real world tests. On Geekbench 6, I got 3,856 on the M4 Pro and I got 3,985 on the single core CPU. So just a little bit better for day-to-day -day tasks, not really much. But where you really start to see the Mac Studio pull away is on those multi-core scores as well as on the GPU scores is where you get almost double on those for the GPU and just a little bit faster on the multi-core. But the GPU and the memory bandwidth is really the reason you're picking the M4 Max chip over the M4 Pro chip. I also got 4,000 megabytes a second on the read and the write for the SSD test on the M4 Pro chip. And on the M4 Max, this one was a two terabyte chip. I was hitting 6,700 megabytes a second on the read and 5,400 megabytes a second on the write. I was expecting to see a bigger difference in coding performance, but using the Xcode benchmark, it was just a little bit faster having the M4 Max Max Studio over the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Also on Blender, I put the classroom scene in and I did a render test and on the M4 Pro, it took four minutes and 15 seconds. And on the M4 Max Max Studio, it took two minutes and 55 seconds. So definitely faster on the studio, but didn't feel like a crazy difference to me. Logic Pro was also pretty interesting running a MIDI instrument with four effects on it. I was able to run 381 channels of it on the M4 Max Studio and 247 channels of it 
on the M4 Pros. And then I enabled 600 instances of that and I did an offline bounce on the M4 Pro. Took two minutes and 23 seconds to do that. And on the Max Studio, it took a minute and a half. So that was also faster. Doing a 64 track bounce, it took 11 seconds on the Max Studio and it took 16 seconds on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. So not a big difference for actual day-to-day -day use. But I do think if you're using a lot of plugins, you would appreciate the extra power of the M4 Max Max Studio. I made a three minute project on Final Cut with a couple 6K cameras, some color adjustment layers as well is some titles and other effects running on it, audio plugins. And on the Mac Studio, it took 52 seconds to export. On the M4 Pro, it took a minute and a half to export. So if you're doing a lot of longer videos, 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute videos, you will really appreciate the faster video export times that you get with the Mac Studio over the Mac Mini. And finally, the most surprising test was my Lightroom export test. I really don't know how this happened, but I did 500 images, exporting them from RAW to JPEG. And on the M4 Mac Studio, it actually took longer to export them than on the M4 Pro and I even ran this a couple times. So if you're just exporting on Lightroom, the M4 Pro and the M4 Max are gonna give you very similar performance. So now that we've talked about all the differences of the chips, the hardware, the ports, the real world tests, which of these should you buy? It's really hard to decide because the M4 Max Max Studio can really add up if you start to upgrade the storage on it, upgrade the RAM on it. I will say I also was running a 64 gigabyte version of this and a 24 gigabyte version of the M4 Pro. The M4 Pro really held up well even against the M4 Max. I think the main areas when I would really say get the max is if you plan on having this for a long time, if your time is money, if you're doing a lot of exporting and rendering of different types of projects, because that's where in the long run, all the time savings will compound and make the M4 Max a better buy for you. But when you compare the fact to this being a $1,400 machine versus a $2,000 machine, and I even upgraded this one. This is not the base model one, and the M4 Pro was still able to come surprisingly close. Really, the main people who should buy the Mac Studio are professionals who are doing a ton of exporting, especially in the video department because of the double video encoders and decoders. That just makes running video exports on apps like Final Cut way faster on the Mac Studio. Otherwise, I will say I was wrong on some videos in the past. You do get very close performance on the M4 Pro. And I think if you're working on a budget and you wanna save more money to go for other accessories like a studio display or better keyboard and mouse, that's when the M4 Pro is really hard to beat. You really can't go wrong with either of them. Just look back at all the different tests we ran to decide if the time savings are worth it for you. If you're interested in buying either of these, I'll have links to a couple of my favorite configurations of these in the description below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.